Portugal is full of hidden gems. Most people coming to Portugal don't take advantage of this. That's a shame because the real Portugal is found beyond Lisbon, Porto and the Algarve. We've spent the last five years traveling Portugal thinner than Andy Dufresne's rock hammer. In this video, we will share our top 10 secret destinations in Portugal. What's up, my boys? Welcome to a little video. I'm very excited about this one because I have travel fever. Yeah, and we will start out with probably the most secret destination. I would say it's actually secret because no one knows about it. Even people from Portugal had never heard about this place. And yeah. it is Corvo and Flores Island. The two most western islands of the Azores archipelago. There are nine islands at the Azores and these two are tiny, but also very hard to get to. But they are totally worth visiting. We were walking on the back of this volcano crater and it is one of the best experiences I've had my entire life. But it, you have to be a nature lover. Um, yeah, but I mean, how, who, it's in our human DNA to love nature. And yeah. I think that's why this, this destination is like an actual bucket list experience, not just for people who want to visit Portugal, but for anyone who want to visit planet Earth. Especially Corvo is so uh, unique because it's a tiny volcano island. They have an airport, they have a whole community, they have 400 people living there, there's no hospital, there's no really any food. It is really a fascinating place to yeah. go. And what I would suggest is that you go to Flores, of course, but Corvo is the island that most most people who go to Florida, they, they stay at Florida and then they maybe have a day trip to Cordoba. Yeah, but that is not the way to do it. You should stay at Cordoba. I to... think it's important to mention that these two islands are not places you go for luxury vacation. If you are taking your time just to go on a five-star hotel and eat at Michelin restaurants, Cordoba is not for you. But if you want to go to places that your friends have never heard about yeah. and that makes you feel like you visited a different universe, Cordoba is the place. There are around 36 hotel beds at Cordova Island. 42 people can sleep on this island. It's so far out in the Atlantic Ocean that it's just as close to Canada as it is to mainland Europe. We are gonna head back to the mainland Portugal for the second gym, which is Monsanto Village. This is literally the real life Flintstone area of the world. <laughs> The whole village of Monsanto is out of a fairy tale. Yeah. You know, you drive there, you can see it in the distance, and as you get closer, you get to the narrow roads all the way up, and it's it's like a movie set, but it's real, and people live there. And it's, it's incredible. You're like mesmerized by, how were these boulders? How, were, how did they come here? Is it like Sisyphus? Did you live here? But it's just mind-blowing and there are very few restaurants in town there's a little convenience store but there's no supermarkets when you go there you want to stay in these boulder houses make sure to grocery shop before because yes. then you make your own food in the little kitchen and we were lucky that our host she actually came with food because we had no idea we couldn't shop anything and we brought this little one yeah. which meant that we couldn't go to any of the restaurants there we're gonna stay within the castle walls because we're heading to Mavao and Casteluvid, which are two different towns, yeah. but we're gonna include them as one town. We stayed not in Casteluvid, but in Mavao, at the Pistana Hotel there. Pusada Mavao. Yeah, and they were dog friendly. It was not like it was luxurious or anything, but it was a very nice hotel. It was just it was cute. Portuguese. exactly what it needed to be. In a way, you could say that castles in Portugal is a little bit like temples in, in Indonesia or Bali. Yeah. But what the difference is that the castles in Portugal, you don't really feel like you've seen them all when you've been to five of them. No, because they are quite different yeah. in reality. And Mavao Castle is just such a well-preserved castle that oh my God. you feel and like they just built it just for the convenience of getting to experience what it what it's what, like. What beauty is like, honestly. Yeah. And the surrounding views that you get there, Oh my goodness, it's one of the prettiest places we've ever been. It was so funny. We came there to completely off season and we could barely find a place to eat lunch. We managed to smuggle Lara into this restaurant, Ukestelo, where they only had a very limited and very unimpressive buffet. And then in the evening when we were like, hmm, we're really, maybe really we, hungry. <laughs> should we drive somewhere else to get dinner? We were like, the hotel concierge was like, oh, there's a fine dine restaurant 
in here within the castle walls. It's called Fago and it's really good. We were like fine dine in Mavao. Place was absolutely beautiful. Run <laughs> by a couple where one of them used to work at one of the best, the best restaurant in the world, uh, Norma. Yeah. So we went there. And this is one of the best meals I've had in Portugal. It, it was breathtakingly good. I would actually go to Mavao just, just to eat there, just, just for that restaurant. Yeah. But Mavao and Castelo Vivo, it's that whole area that is unique. It's about having a rental car. And by the way, you should have a rental car for basically, any of these places. Basically, every single destination we're Except talking about in this Portable. video. One of the best trips we have had in Portugal was our exploration trip when we went to the north and we went to Jerez Nature Park. And Jerez is a very famous place for Portuguese people to go and celebrate their summer vacation. But when you are not from Portugal, you might never have heard about it. And it is such a shame because this is the prettiest nature in Portugal probably. It's the only national park in yes. Portugal and they are very adamant about saying that. I'm not sure why, but what we love so much about this place was First of all, that it just feels completely authentic. Yeah. There is no over tourism and the, the amount of waterfalls, the amount of just exciting places to go with your rental car. Yeah, I mean, we were literally stopping at the side of the road, watching the most giant birds flying around. They even flew with our drone, actually. Yeah. And then we were watching horses, wild horses running around. And it's just magical. And then when it's this pretty. It's a place to go during summer because sure. during winter, most hotels close. Next to Jerez, if you go there, you have to also go to Minho, which is yes. uh, oh. perhaps the most unknown region of Portugal. We've been all over the place, like Viano do Castelo. This is where you find farm to table experiences in the true essence. We went to a goat cheese factory where- They are massaging the goats and playing opera for them. I mean, come on. Although this is where Europe's best beach is located, most people don't know about it. And it's yeah. called Porto Santo. It's actually a part of the Madeira Island group. Where we, where live. we live. So we have two islands here. The main island is Madeira. And the second island is Porto Santo. It's a tiny island and it's a place for the Madeiran people to go and have their summer vacation. This island literally have therapeutic sand. It's pretty wild how underdeveloped Porto Santo is. And I think that's also what makes it amazing special. Yeah. Because when you go there, it's not a luxury destination. You have a few hotels there kind of expensive actually when you go in, in high season yeah. uh, but it's not like whoa but it doesn't really matter because it's still comfortable yeah. but you you go there to really just relax on the beach the water you know crystal the, clear blue the, Maldives those water. beaches where the sand just goes forever you know down in and there's no algae there's no rocks nothing but crispy white sand and then what we did was we actually rented a house and we stayed there with friends. We cooked ourselves because there is not a lot of restaurants. And rent an ATV to yeah. drive around the island. Um, so much fun. You don't really need a car there, but then again, you kind of need a car. So if you're going it, to Porto Santo, you're probably also going to Madeira. And then you rent a car, take the boat and you sail there because... Yeah, yeah it takes two hours with the boat. It's a really beautiful ride. We were so lucky to be invited on a trip on our, I think, first year in Portugal. And we were going to the very north to a place that we have never heard about, and it's called Braganza. The whole surrounding area of Braganza is incredible. You have Rio de Honor. Rio de Honor. Quantos homens vivem aqui em... 60 pessoas. And then you have the, the home place of Alieira, which is called Mirandela. 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 <laughs> we would go back for one reason only, even if everything else was not beautiful, we would go back only for Urbil. I mean, Pagansa as a town, as a city, is not completely unknown and, and secret, but it's the area around yeah. Montesinho, it's the nature, it's this corner of Portugal where you don't really go unless you really want to go. So this restaurant called Uabel, which is right outside Paganza in a place called Gimond, they have a restaurant that is so iconic that they had to build and attach a hotel because people from all corners of earth would fly there to eat their pasta. And pasta 
is the most environment friendly and animal friendly meat that you can eat. They literally live in nature free in their natural habitat in their natural habitat their entire life until if you grow up in Europe, you are of the understanding that you go skiing in the Alps. But the truth is that you can actually ski in Portugal approximately five days a year. <laughs> because that's when Serra di Estrela, which is the next hidden gym, is actually very cold. And this nature park is maravilloso. It has one of my favorite small towns in all of Portugal, Pilbao. You are driving in these tall mountains and there are endless opportunities for exploring nature and small towns there. And even though it's the highest point on mainland Portugal, it's overseen. And we come there to really uh, hang out in nature. We have a, a friend there who is like the Christopher Columbus of Serra da Estrela. I mean, he's found s species that uh, no one knew existed. A cave beetle. Yes with uh, short eyes. He's, He's been spending days or months in a very, very uncomfortable cave yeah. just to figure out what microclimate is in there. It's just like when you go on a tour with him, you are seeing a world you didn't know existed. And he definitely also have made both uh, of our Serra di Estrela trips yeah. extra cool. And you actually have a number of uh, wonderful hotels very also nice hotels. In, in, in Serra di Estrela. And I wouldn't go there to ski. It's it's no. a little bit gimmicky the whole skiing thing. For at least for us who likes actual skiing. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's fun to say that you've been skiing in, in Portugal. But I would just go there to really just take in the nature, eat tons of cheese mm, and yes. good wine. Go to the Borel factory. They make all sorts of items out of wool, but they make it in the old way of creating wool, which means that most of it is made by hand. It's dyed with like organic stuff. Even their machines are very old. They're from the 1912 or something, the machine. Some of them were even older. That kind of handcraft you don't really find today. And the hotels we stayed at, they had incredible fine dine experiences as well. All, all of them, mm. both of them. Yeah. We say this about every region that this is our favorite region, but Alentejo is probably our favorite region because that's where we truly fell in love with Portugal. Mavao and Castelo Vid is in Alentejo, but Alentejo is so big that it's much more than just that corner of, of, of the region. So you should rent a car and plan these hotels that we mentioned to you now as part of your Alentejo adventure, because what makes Alentejo special is getting lost in the pristine nature, hugging a cork tree, going to some of the wineries, staying at, at Dara da Martinha, São Lourenço do Barrocal. One of the best hotels in Portugal, if you ask me. Adare dos Cruz. There are so many beautiful hotels in Alentejo, but you have to look for them and drive to them. There is this beautiful place by the coast. Villa Nova Milfons. Yes, they have a restaurant called O Celso. When we talk about good food in Portugal, this is one of the places where we're like, oh my God. This is where all the Portuguese go, so it's absolutely packed during summer and you kind of have to book well in advance to to get a table there but it's also well worth it. El Gav is not a secret but there is kind of a secret corner called Villa Real de Santo Antonio and we made a full video there and we called it the tiny Lisbon of El Gav because this is basically a miniature version of Lisbon yeah and it's an overseen part of El Gav because most of El Gao ends at Tavira. Otherwise, you go to the west from there. But right at the border, you can look to Spain. You have this cozy little town with a hotel we hold dear to our heart. Ah, oh, it's so amazing. It's so amazing, this hotel, that I would go just for, I would just leave the island to go there for a weekend stay. Yeah. I mean, it's so incredible. And if you go during summer, they have this amazing beach bar lounge with pool and everything that yeah. you can come and hang out with. And the beds are so good that I contacted them to get the factory name so that we could get the same mattresses for our new villa. We went there to dine and it was a great dining experience, like fine dining. But what really stood out to me was the mocktails. They had... you're almost not drinking at that. I'm still not drinking, yeah. but the, the bartender made the most incredible mocktails. They were so great that I didn't even need alcohol. <laughs> 
it's luxury, but in such a family setting where you feel the passion, the love from the uh, people who run it. The last one, Vidago. It's kind of because of the hotel, but it's also because the whole area is special. So Vidago Palace. It's the most beautiful hotel in Portugal. And it was just, wow, what an experience we had there. And not just because of the hotel, but the area combined with the hotel. We we're driving around in this old car from 1945 or something, seeing the old town. It is home to the sacred water, the healing water of Vidago, which was used to, to treat people with illnesses back in the days. Today, it's like a five-star hotel. We had so much fun at this hotel that we actually yeah. didn't even want to leave it. We had a picnic, we went tennising. T tennising? We spent a day by the by the pool and we went biking and then the room is just oh oh that's hot we had a breakfast at the room we were sitting in our little balcony because we booked the you have to book the corner it's a junior room. suite there's only one room with this balcony we had and that's like sitting there having the morning breakfast absolutely unbelievable and then they have the Titanic staircase, or should I say the Vidago staircase, because... Titanic used that staircase for inspiration, not the other way around. Yeah, this was actually the inspiration for what ended up as uh, Leonardo DiCaprio yes. walking down and uh, yeah. saying hi to Kate Winslet. Do they also have a Michelin restaurant there? Yes. I think the restaurant we ate at was a Michelin restaurant. And you're only still talking about the banana dessert. That wasn't a banana, but it was a banana. Remember? Y yes, <laughs> oh, I, I remember. Of course you do. Yeah. 20 minutes from Vidago, actually owned by the same hotel you have, Sagada's Hotel. Which is also a place that is home to a sacred natural uh, gasify, what do you call it? Naturally carbonated water. Yes. And this is actually something that you find a lot uh, around Portugal. When you order uh, sparkling water at most restaurants, you'll get uh, Petra Salgada. They even have a museum at that hotel. Yeah. And we stayed in the coolest architectural little marvel, like That's, a cabin on one It's a treehouse. Yeah. A luxury treehouse. It was so cool. And we went also to the, this uh, adventure park, remember? Yes. Oh my God, it was so much fun. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> These are just the, the places in Portugal that most people, most tourists, don't really know about. Yeah. And I, I think it's a shame because Portugal now is not a secret anymore. No. Everybody has been to Lisbon, everybody has been to Porto. And the Algarve has been explored for yeah, 30 decades. years already. Yeah. Come to Portugal, but try to go to these places. It's, it's an incredible country and I think we could actually do a part two because I have so many other places on my mind for a future yeah. video already. Uh, and guys, we actually offer planning assistance. If you want to book us, you can go to our Patreon and we can help you plan your trip. We also have a guide to Madeira. If you're coming to Madeira, we have a guide to Lisbon. That's it for this time. Come connect with us on Patreon. You can also just come and get your exclusive content there. Yeah. Every single Sunday we post a new video that's only for Patreon. We just uploaded a video about our camera gear collection, if you care about that. But we also have a lot of like furniture shopping in Portugal. Things we knew we uh, things we things wish we knew we wish think <laughs> things we wish we knew when we moved to Portugal the best places to live. Anyway, come hang out with us on Patreon. It would mean the world to us. Until next time. Do I have to break here? No, don't break. Okay, okay, I'm okay. Breaking. It says break. It says break. Oh, don't break. Okay, okay. Did, did you, you break? Did no, you break? I didn't break at all. Okay, well. Time.